the repentant criminal on the cross shows us that deathbed conversions are actually possible. And his conversion is actually genuine. He is not trying to appease a worried spouse. He's not trying to guarantee himself a church funeral. But he instead recognizes the truth. He recognizes the truth not only about himself, that he's a sinner, but he also recognizes the truth about Jesus. Because Jesus is the very truth embodied, hanging there next to him on the cross. The thief confesses his guilt. He asks that Jesus would remember him. And then he receives Jesus' pardon when Jesus says, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, that the thief's place in paradise is assured by Jesus has led many to a very age-old question. Talk about this in seminary. You've probably heard it before. So the thief on the cross was saved. Was he baptized? And that's a good question because uh, the scripture makes many wonderful promises about what happens in baptism. We heard part of that uh, when we were looking at 1 Peter in our Lenten midweek services because Peter says, baptism now saves you. And Jesus is very emphatic when he goes and or Nicodemus comes and he speaks to Nicodemus and Jesus says, truly I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The clear teaching of the scripture is that baptism is necessary for salvation because it is the entrance into God's kingdom, into the kingdom that has been won for us by Christ's death and resurrection. Sometimes we look for exceptions to the necessity of baptism. And certainly some do die without or with faith but without baptism. And Jesus actually speaks to this when he tells the disciples, uh, the words that we know also from the catechism, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So the short answer is we can't answer the question as to whether the thief on the cross is baptized or not. But his salvation is not really so much an exception to baptism, as it is that it is baptism in another form. Because in his dying moments, the thief on the cross actually has everything that you and I have when we're baptized. St. Paul tells us that in baptism, we are crucified with Christ. And if you think about the thief on the cross, he was quite literally, bodily crucified with Christ. And the thief actually hears the same promise that we hear when we're baptized. The promise that God makes to us at this font is that when we are baptized, the gates of heaven are open to us, to all of us who have been baptized into his death, who have been crucified with Christ. And actually, the thief on the cross hears this promise directly from Jesus' mouth, said to him personally, today you will be with me in paradise. And we hear these same things when the water is applied to our heads by Jesus' command and in the name of the triune God. So that leaves just one thing, and that would be the water. Is there water? Well, we know uh, in the early church, and this is also actually true in Luther's day, so even our descendants, or rather our forebears, um, in northern Germany, as cold a place it was, they would immerse the babies in the font. And so that, that immersion... Uh, signifies that drowning of the old Adam, uh, the, the killing of his sin, and also dying with Christ. And the thief is immersed. He is immersed and he's plunged right into the bloody death of the Son of God. This is his baptism. Now what he gets to see with his physical eye is all of those realities that are applied to us when we're baptized with water at this font. Because we too die with Jesus. We too come to the end of our sinful selves, and then we hear from Jesus' lips, through the pastor as from God himself, that yes, even you won't be forgotten when Jesus' kingdoms come, when his kingdom comes. There's an old hymn that was printed in the Lutheran hymnal, and for some reason, I can't think of a satisfactory one, but it hasn't been in any of our subsequent service books. 
And I think these words are especially fitting to ponder as we reflect on the saving and sacramental death of Jesus our Lord. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood to lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there have I, as vile as he, washed all my sins away. Amen.